Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Today's video is my vlog for the third quarter of 2021. So today we're going to be talking about everything I've been sewing and working on for July, August, September. <laughs> I had to think a minute there. <laughs> um, so let's dive right in. Um, the biggest thing for this quarter was a new sewing pattern. This is my first sewing pattern of the year. I'm wearing it right here. It's the Miri tank top and there are two views. The first view is this really basic um, curved scoop neck, curved armholes. Um, and the second view, view B, has a V-neck and then squared off armholes and a squared off back. Both of these views are finished with a facing, which I think is a really beginner friendly finish. And it's really good when you're doing angles like this, um, cause it's almost, or well, it's just really hard to get an angle when you're finishing with a bias tape. So I wanted to make a pattern that was very beginner friendly. So I did the facing and I think that this is just a really great pattern that's really wearable that everyone can use. And to make it extra beginner friendly, there are cup sizes. So you can choose between an AB cup, a CD cup, and an EF cup. Um, I really designed this pattern for beginners, as I've said, and I feel like getting the right cup size can be one of the things that really trips you up when you're starting to sew. So I wanted to kind of get that adjustment out of the way as much as possible. Um, the thing with doing so many or doing multiple cup sizes is that it really increases the amount of pattern pieces. So um, I did the three cup sizes for every single size in the pattern. So, so for zero through 32, you can choose between those three cup sizes. Cause I know that, you know, you can be a size four and have an F cup, or you can be a size 26 and have a B cup. So I felt like just having like a D cup for the higher sizes and a B cup for the lower sizes really would not be covering enough people. And I wanted it to be more inclusive, of all the different bust sizes. So that's why there are three cup sizes for all the sizes, but that meant that there were, you know, three times as many pattern pieces, which is really a lot to handle way more than I expected. Um, and for a minute, I was thinking that I would do like A cup, B cup, C cup, each one separately, but that was just way too much to handle. Like it was enough as it was. So um, I went right in between. So the way it's sized is um, that AB cup is really fitted for someone who's like right in between an AB cup. So there's three inches of ease at the bust. So being right in between usually gives you a pretty good fit. Um, if you're over an F cup, then you probably will want to do a full bust adjustment. But most of my testers were able to get right into the pattern and not have to do any small bust or full bust adjustments. So I will put a link to this pattern down in the show notes. Um, definitely, I think it's a ward wardrobe staple, gives you lots of size options. And personally, View B is my favorite with this V-neck and the squared off armholes. All right, let's go a little bit farther back in time. And I have a few things that I made and blogged about. And I think some of these I was working on during my last vlog, but now they're finished. So the first one is the parasol dress. And this is a pattern by Chris Wood Sews. And I have a blog post about it that I'll put in the show notes. Um, I used a silk fabric, so it feels super luxurious. And I used French seams to finish the whole thing um, because it's silk, you know, you have to like go all out when you're using silk. So French seams in here. Um, and I used a French seam technique to finish the underarm that I developed for my Tossy robe and jacket. So um, in my blog post, I talk more about that, but it's kind of tricky to do French seams when you have this um, right angle. So I have a special method for figuring that out. Um, I also did inseam pockets 
But the one thing where I really went wrong was I put my pockets way too low. So um, they're like down here and I should have put them way up here because I just didn't realize like how much that side seam was going to go down or like hang down once I put it on. Um, and I haven't moved them yet. They're, I mean, maybe I'll move them. It feels like, ah, oh, shoot. I had a phone call. Now I'm back. Um, <laughs> so this parasol dress, I really love it. I think it was a great use for this statement fabric. I got, I bought this at the fabric store here in LA when they were still open, um, like six, seven, eight years ago, a really long time ago. So, um, I'm really happy that I finally used this deep stash fabric for this really fabulous dress. Um, I'm hoping maybe to go to Palm Springs later this year when it cools down there. Um, and I think this would be a really great dress to wear out there. So another dress that I think I was in progress sewing when I last did a vlog is this Darling Ranges dress. And this is a um, pattern by Megan Nielsen. And I used this really soft rayon fabric. It's kind of a dark sage color. Um, it's a pattern that I've made before and I really love my other dress and I've really enjoyed wearing this one too. Um, I have shell buttons from my stash um, that I really like. And the only thing with this is there are no pockets, which I kind of miss, but it's okay. Um, I didn't quite have enough fabric to cut out the two front pieces and the back piece for the skirt. So I just used all the fabric I had left to make one big piece for the skirt. So I think it's a little less full um, and there are no pockets, but I really liked it. It's all wrinkly because I've been wearing it. <laughs> so definitely a success. Um, one thing that went wrong was the neckline has stretched out a little bit. Um, and I think that's probably because this fabric is kind of delicate and, um, you know, with the bias facing, I think that might be more prone to stretching. So I don't know if I can fix it. I'm just going to leave it for now. I think I've been talking about this work in progress for a year and a half now, probably, because that's how long I've been making it. But I have finally finished the quilt top for my free wheeling single girl quilt. This design is by Denise Schmidt, um, and it's in inspired by the double wedding ring quilt. Um, so I really love her designs. They're a modern take. I love that they're not perfectly symmetrical or like perfect geometric shapes. Um, so there are these big rings that are kind of like a little square, a little oval, not perfect circles. Um, I, yeah, I used all stash fabric. Um, I'll put in a picture here for, um, so you can see the whole quilt better. It's a queen size. So there are 16 blocks. Um, yeah, it's a big one. I'm gonna send this out to a family friend to get long arm quilted because I just don't feel like tackling a queen size quilt myself. Um, but I'm excited to like finally have a quilt that's big enough for my bed. Another thing that I've made is this Mary tank top hack. And by the time this blog post or vlog goes out, the blog post for the tank top should be live. So it has a square neckline and a button back. And I love this top. You can see there's like cat hair all over it and it's all wrinkled because I've worn it multiple times this week. This tank top is inspired by one of the first successful garments that I ever made. And I actually have the pattern right here. This is Butterick 4553 and it's circa 1996 when I like really started sewing for myself a lot. So um, inspired by this view right here, um, they don't actually show it in the pictures, but the pattern does instruct you to do a button back. Um, and I just think it's like a really beautiful um, finish and like you get to showcase some really cool buttons. Um, this fabric is a linen fabric from the fabric store that they gifted me a number of years ago. And the buttons are hand carved wooden buttons that I bought in Estonia. Um, I went to Finland and Sweden in 2019 
So two years ago, and we did one day where we took the ferry over to Tallinn. So we were there just there for a few hours and I stumbled into a little shop and they had a bunch of like hand carved wooden things and these wooden buttons. So I'm really pleased that I was able to find a use for them. And I actually bought 10 buttons, but I decided to only use five on here because they're like such a statement button. I didn't think that I needed any more than five. So I'll put a link down in the show notes to this blog post. Um, I'm pretty proud of how I constructed this, but it is a little bit tricky. It's definitely more tricky than the regular Miri tank, um, but it's a really clean finish. Well, I have a couple more blog posts about makes, um, and I don't know where those garments are right now, but the first one is for a Dana jumpsuit that I made and never blogged about. I'll put a photo in. It's a really cute red print. It's a rayon. Um, yeah, just a really cute, it's a fun jumpsuit for summer. It comes with shorts or pants version, um, and pants would be great for like holiday outfit, which I have also made. Maybe I'll put a photo in here. Um, probably my favorite jumpsuit of all time. Um, and then the other thing I made is a hack of my summer sweatsuit tank top. So it's a razorback tank top and I hacked it into a maxi length dress with a side seam. So again, I'll put a photo in here. Um, it's really just a classic, really comfy thing to wear in the summer. I've also been continuing my series of pattern fitting tutorials on here on YouTube. And I did four tutorials about different ways or different places in a pattern where you might want to adjust the length. So I showed how to adjust the length in pants, legs, in sleeves, in a bodice, and for a skirt. So for all of those, I talk about the different considerations with patterns and why you would want to lengthen or shorten in a certain way. Um, the technique is pretty similar, but with different kinds of garments, you have to consider different things. Like with a skirt, you need to consider movement and walking. So um, definitely check those out. I even have a whole playlist of my pattern fitting tutorials, which I will put in here. Um, so they're just there for reference whenever you get to a pattern where you need to adjust the length. I've also been working on this other Miri tank top in view B. Um, and I'm using this fabric that is also from the fabric store, but I don't have very much of it. And I want to also make a dress out of it. So I cut out facings from a different fabric, but the other fabric I decided was just too heavy because this is a pretty lightweight fabric. So, um, you know, it's totally okay to use different fabric for your facings, but you don't want to use something that's a lot heavier because then it's just going to like weight down the garment. So I need to find some other fabric for the facing. Um, or I just need to sew that dress <laughs> first, get it done, make sure I've maximized my fabric, and then I can come back and cut out facings. So this one's in progress. Um, I'm planning to make the Reggie wrap dress by Seamwork out of the same fabric. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. Um, I really liked this fabric, but I've kind of like felt worried that maybe it doesn't look that good with my skin tone. Like the pale pink is like too close to my actual skin, but just gonna keep going. So another hack that I'm working on is a Miri dress. So I'm doing the scoop neck and then adding a gathered skirt. So that is currently in progress. And I'm going to be adding in inseam pockets and I will do a tutorial about these. So a little sneak peek. Um, this is fabric that I got in Finland during that trip two years ago. Um, I think it's just really beautiful. I love all the colors in it. Um, so make sure to stay tuned, subscribe for my inseam pocket tutorial coming soon. So other exciting news is that I bought a projector. So if you've never heard of using projectors for sewing, it's been around for a number of years. And what people do is they project the image of the pattern pieces onto the fabric instead of printing it out. So they just project it onto fabric and then cut their fabric out. So you skip that whole process of cutting out and or cutting out your pattern, printing it, 
all that, you just go right to cutting your fabric. So it saves people a lot of time. Um, a lot of people use it who sew for their kids because kids change sizes. So they're able to just go project that next size rather than printing out and assembling another pattern. There was an episode of Seamwork Radio, the podcast, talking about projectors. And um, I never really understood why people would want to use a projector for sewing because um, like I always have to do pattern adjustments and I'm like, well, how do you do pattern adjustments if you just project the pattern right onto your fabric? Like you need that. And I always forget to like transfer markings and things. So it never really clicked for me, but then in the, um, let's set this down <laughs> in the podcast, they said, oh, well you can do pattern adjustments digitally on your computer before you project it. And it was such a light bulb moment. Cause I'm like, oh yeah, of course I actually do that sometimes. I can do that. And then they also pointed out that it's a much faster way of testing out a pattern while you're in the development and drafting process, which was like second light bulb. <laughs> like, of course, you know, when I'm developing these patterns, I'll like end up printing it out like 10 times at least. And sometimes I get confused about which version is which. And um, it's just really a hassle and there's like paper everywhere. So I'm looking forward to getting this set up. I've had it for a few weeks um, and I played around with it a little bit. So this kind of projector is an ultra short throw. And that means, so it's designed to, I'll show you again. So it's designed to sit like this on a table and then project a movie or whatever up onto a wall. So, but I'm gonna use it like this and project down onto a table. And it's not super steady sitting this way. So um, I'm gonna have, my dad's gonna help me build a stand for it. And I I really recommend if you're interested in projectors um, that you check out this Facebook groups, um, Projectors for Sewing. The woman who is interviewed in the podcast um, is part of that group and the group is super helpful. They have all these guides about different kinds of projectors. And uh, it was even in that Facebook group where I found plans for making a stand for this projector. So my dad has kindly offered to make a little stand for me. Um, so then I can like just have the projector on the stand and I'll be able to move that around and keep it fairly um, in line because you just have to get it like at the right angle to get your image projected and like <laughs> projected in a way that's not skewed. So sometimes, you know, it could keystone, they say, just get skewed. So you need to make sure it's like really square. And that's kind of the hardest thing is getting that image projected really square. Well, I think that's it for all of my sewing things. Um, I wanted to give you a little update on my migraines, which I talked about in my last vlog. Um, that was in June and June was actually kind of a hard month for me. I probably had like a good 10 days of feeling horrible where I just had to lay in bed and couldn't really do anything. But since June, I've been getting a lot better. And I think that big change was that I've added in some supplements that are supposed to help people with migraines. So um, since I've added those in, I've been feeling a lot better. And now it's more like three or four days a month where I don't feel that great. Um, so really good news. I wish it was like zero days a month that I didn't feel great, but it's so much better to be back to this place where I'm having days now where I don't have a headache at all, which is amazing. Like when you've gone for months and months having a headache every day, it's like <laughs> miraculous to suddenly not have that pain anymore. So I'm really thankful and grateful that I've been able to find some solutions that work for me and that I'm feeling better. Um, I have lots of tutorials planned. Um, hopefully some new patterns. Um, I would, I also want to be doing a new e-course that will go with my Miri tank top. Um, I actually was working on the e-course and I thought I need to have a pattern that goes with it. So I made the pattern, but now I need to make the e-course. I'm doing it a little bit backwards maybe, but <laughs> eventually I'd like to do an e-course for beginning sewists. Um, and the Miri tank top is the basis for that. 
So yeah, so things are looking up around here. Um, I'm still doing a lot of other work um, besides so DIY. So it's always a tricky balance to, um, yeah, just balance my time and get everything done that I want to get done. So there are certain weeks where, you know, just won't do a video because I don't have time. And especially having a sensitive um, health <laughs> sensitive body I don't want to push myself too much um because like staying up late can be a trigger for a lot of people with migraines so just have to take care of myself and balance everything but I definitely wish I could be sewing a lot more um but I do have lots of things planned coming up so I would be so honored if you have not already if you like hit the little subscribe button down below um, check out the show notes for links to my Mary tank top pattern and all those blog posts and videos that I mentioned. Happy sewing.